Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good to do in this lecture the uh, a company called Zara. This is a Spanish company which does uh, uh, fashion uh, dresses for uh, women, children, and men. And it is a very very special uh, company. It's a in fashion business and does very well. And it's one of the role models. So. I mean, basically, it's a company that does things uh, in a very unconventional fashion, and its supply chain is supposed to be uh, excellent, but it doesn't follow most of the uh, principles that their competitors follow. But still, it does well, and the it is very intuitive to understand how it does, and but it is difficult to imitate uh, the. Uh, the practices that Zara does. So, it is very important that uh, we study Zara to understand uh, the uh, how the management skills are more important than uh, the others uh, practices. So, let us look at the apparel supply chain which is uh, the business in which Zara is and, and what is the business system what is the internationalization strategy or what is the kind of IT it uses and the risk of failure that Zara business model. I mean one of the things that uh, why we are talking risk of risks of failure of Zara business model is because it is so easy to imitate this and uh, it is so unconventional and people may think and it, it follows practices which uh, other businesses want. So, it's people think that this can fail very easily, but let us see how, what are the things that make it fail and what is the takeaway from here. So, founded in 1963 uh, by Ortega and first Zara shop opened in 1975 selling low price imitations of more of market fashion house. So, it is low priced or medium priced, but the market is up fashion. And Zara is a part of uh, uh, Inditex group uh, which is uh, 4 billion dollars and 100 percent bond company and based in Barcelona and over 80 percent of the group sales are contributed by Zara's 600 stores. It is an international company, women's men and children wear over 700 stores in 56 countries and Ortega thought that customers would regard clothes as a perishable commodity. No different from yogurt or bread to be consumed rather than stored in closets. So, you should you should look at uh, Zara's uh, uh, thinking, it is not it is not a, uh, a permanent uh, asset, clothes are not and they they just this one. So, let us look at apparel supply chain and global apparel supply chains the channel masters could be retailers or brand masters or trading companies. So, who are all the apparel supply chain masters in this? So, it could be retailers like Walmart or, uh, or Macy's or any of these people big retailers in the United States or brand manufacturers it could be Polo or it could be anybody or trading companies like Lee and Fun. So, these are all the, the global uh, masters and if you look at the value chain you have cotton, wool or silk, you have oil or natural gas that goes into petrochemicals to make synthetic fibers and you have yarn and fabric that goes in and it goes to the apparel manufacturers and all retail stores and retail orders goes to. So, you have basically raw materials, composer networks, production networks and export networks and marketing channels in this. I mean this is a typical 
April supply chain. And what is it? Where is it? Where is Sarah in this uh, April supply chain? And learning by doing was the mantra of achieving favorable outcomes. See, if you are in fashion business, what is the first thing you do? You do the designing. You do the advertising. You do basically, uh, you know, low cost outsourcing. And you put all your things on a, on this one on time. You have plenty of, of stocks in the stores that are available so that whenever, whatever customer wants, whenever he wants, it's available. These are all the usual things, but Zara is different. It wants to learn by doing it and Zara produces and presents very limited volumes of new items in certain key stores. They are produced on large scale only if consumer reactions were unambiguously positive. Now, what it does is looks at the market, pe what people are wearing, what people are liking, produce the sample items, produce them in this, keep it for two weeks, give the people a feeling that if they don't buy it now, it may not be available next time. And uh, remove it after two weeks if it is not selling. The failure rates on new products was only 1% as compared to average of 10% on this sector. And the design, Jara design teams continuously track customer preferences and use this information about sales potential based on the consumption information to transmit repeat orders and new designs to internal and external suppliers. Now, while all the retailers track the customers, what Jara tracks are the customer preferences. What is it that the customers are buying? They talk to the, to the stores managers, they attend the fashion shows, they attend, uh, they talk to their customers, they, they go to the schools and talk to the young people and so on. So, what Jara does is basically track the customers, their preferences. The design teams are bridged mer merchandising and the back end of the production process. So, your four critical information closely watch the trends of buying behavior. Closely watch the trends of buying behavior. Market research on university campuses, discos, and other venues. What is that people are wearing? What color they want? Feedback from the store, sales report. So once you look at it, you take the headquarters, regional managers, collect and analyze the feedback. And commercial team sits with the designers to use the information to create new lines. That's a quick decision. And afterwards, you just take the inventory of what the fabrics that you have and you produce the products and send them to the stores. Now, this is in contrast with what usually happens in a fashion business. What happens is you design, you have catwalks and all that, then you manufacture, put it in a high store like Massey's and other stores and keep them in large numbers so as people buy you tell them and if something afterwards you sell them on discount. But what Jara does is it just, it does not design things for the future, but it just sees at the present what people are wearing and goes to the market what are the items that they have, they design those, use the uh, products they have, the cloth they have, produce this and send it to the market. And Zara supply chain is highly unconventional. Zara defies most conventional wisdom about how supply chain should be run. Some of Zara's practices may seem questionable, if not crazy. Unlike so many other peers in retail clothing, the trust to outsource Zara keeps all the production in the house. Far from pushing factories to maximize their output, the company intentionally leaves extra capacity. 
Rather than chase economies of scale, Zara manufactures and distributes products in small batches. Instead of relying on outside partners, Zara manages design, warehousing, distribution and logistics itself. So you can see so many unconventional things. There is no scale. It does manufacturing everything by itself and it handles all the logistics, everything itself and still make profit. How does it do it? So many of Zara's day to day operational procedures differ from the norm. Zara holds retail stores to a rigid timetable for placing orders and receiving stock. It puts price tags on items before they are shipped rather than at each store. So the prices are not determined at the store. There is no price change. There is no reduction in the volumes in the, in the price. This one, there is no discounting. It is all decided at the headquarters. It leaves large areas empty in its experience of retail shops and it encourages occasional stockouts. Now, by, by encouraging occasional stockouts, it creates a sense of insecurity in the minds of the customers. If I do not buy it now, it will not be available next. When they come, most of us, they postpone the decision thinking that you can buy it when you come later, it is going to be there. But in Zara, it is not going to be there. So if you like something, you buy it now. Otherwise, it won't be there. That's the kind of feeling that it gives to the customers. Zara sends half empty trucks across Europe. Now, what are you going to do with this? Well, usually full load trucks, people wait till the full load trucks is there and it pays for air freight twice a week to ship coats on hangars to Japan and runs factories only one shift. In other words, it is going to be expensive with all these assets it only owns and it does not run them to full capacity, it does not run them to full truck loads, it does not keep inventory at the shops and it ships them by air freight if it is needed, if there is sales. So whatever people are discussing in terms of keeping just in time, in terms of the efficiency, lean manufacturing, they are all defied by, by Zara. Zara's senior managers have stayed the course and resisted setting performance measures that would make the operating managers focus on local efficiency at the expense of global responsiveness. So what is important is to give the customers what they like at that time instant and they do not care for the efficiency. So that is the procedures that Jara follows. So if you look at design, each of the, each of uh, Zara's product designs for women, men and children have creative team consisting of designers, sourcing specialists and product development personnel and they have frequent conversations with managers, information included in the industry, publications, TV, internet and film content and trend spotters who focused on venues such as university campuses and discos and even Zara's young fashion conscious staff. So as we said earlier, this is the information from which the Zara gets. And contrary to what happens in other apparel manufacturers or other electronic manufacturers, Zara is vertically integrated. It is global, but it is vertically integrated. International, internal manufacturing was the primary responsibility of 20 fully owned factories located near Zara headquarters. Most of these manufacturing and distribution centers are in headquarters. Zara's factories were heavily automated, focused on the capital intensive parts of production process, pattern design, cutting, finishing and inspection. These are the things that are, that are heavily designed. 
heavily automated and cut garments were sent out to 450 workshops with small operations specialized by product type. So, you have automated cutting and all that and then there is specialization for this and Jara accounted for most if not all the production provided them with technology, logistics, financial support carried out inspections on site. The suit garments were inspected, ironed, folded, bagged and ticketed at Zara's manufacturing complex before sending it to the distribution center. So, you can see that Zara follows a vertically integrated system and it is quite authoritative in the sense of setting up the prices and in terms of the quality and other things. What about the store operations? Jara store were located in highly visible locations, often in the premier shopping streets, in a local market and upside shopping centers. So, you will find all Jara stores in, in high streets, they pay high rent and of course, they get lot of visibility. So, you can see that Jara follows all non-traditional this one, they do not want to save on to, to, to project themselves as the fashion masters. They are on high streets, they produce, they have manufacturing capacity which is left uh, half empty and so on. The stores function both as companies face to the world and also as information sources. So, I actively managed its portfolio of stores and relocate in response to the evolution of shopping districts and traffic patterns. Walda smaller stores may be relocated as well as updated in new and more suitable suits sites. And Sara invested more heavily and more frequently than key competitors in refurbishing its stores base. So, as far as the stores are concerned, they are state of the art, they are in high street, they pay huge rents and it is the face of the company. And when people come there, they basically think of Zara and also they supply a lot of information what are the trends on fashion. Three principles of Zara supply chain transfer both hard data and anecdotal information from shoppers to designers and production staff quickly. Track materials and products in real time every step of the way including inventory and display in the stores. And stock to rhythm across the entire chain, timing and synchronicity are paramount. In other words, there is a rhythm across the chain, whatever the customer wants, you quickly find out, you manufacture them and you send it to the store. Leverage the assets, Jara produces roughly half the products in its own factories. It buys fabric and dyes from, indi from indirect forms. So much of vertical integration is out of fashion in the industry. Rivals like Gap and H&M own no production facilities. I mean, you know, if you take electronics, apparel and so on, there, there is outsourcing, globalization and all that, but Jara does everything in its headquarters. It owns every, every piece. It owns the logistics, it owns the manufacturing, it owns the, all the automated equipment, it owns all the shops in high street. So, what is the competitive economics of this? How does it make money? Still, it does make money. Zara can sell some of 80 percent of the products at full price, about twice the industry average. 
So when I does all this, it sells the products at the full price. The ability to avoid markdowns more than compensates for any added manufacturing and distribution costs. So that is the logic. The logic is you say to save costs you outsource. You put your stores in, in mediocre places and you mark down later. Why are you marking down? Because things went out of fashion. That is why is it there out of fashion from your design to this one there is an amount of lead time because of outsourcing and all that. So, what Jara does is from what the customer wants, find out what the customer wants from that time within two weeks you supply it on the stores and make customer nervous whether if you do not buy it now it was it is not going to be there. So, because of these kind of feelings that Zara sells its 80 percent of the products at full price about twice the industry average. So, you can see how much money it makes on that. In other words, if there is a hundred dollars, it sells at hundred dollars instead of at fifty dollars marked down which is 40 percent, you can calculate how much money it makes. Zara's product merchandising policy. Zara Jara's name had nevertheless developed considerable drawing power in major markets. Jara shopper even know which days of the week delivery trucks come came into the stores and shopped accordingly. About three quarters of the merchandise on display was changed every three to four weeks which also corresponded to the average time between visits given estimates that the average. Zara shoppers visited the chain 17 times a year compared with an average figure of 3 to 4 times for competing chains and their customers. So, the, the feeling that, that Zara gives is that if you do not buy it now, it will go, you may not get it again first thing. Second thing is it is going to every two, three weeks there is going to be change in new fashion items in Jara. So, people if you want high fashion items you go and visit Jara more frequently. So, that you get what is the fashion you can get it uh, in Jara and the prices are not very heavy. And you need not go to out of town to get the uh, to go to a Zara store, it is in the high street, it is in the center of the town. So, that is how Zara makes money and inventory to sales ratio is Zara here and gap here, this is 14 percent and this is 7 percent. So, it is half of half of gap and so on. So, what is the Jara's internationalization strategy? International expansion has adopted three different entry models. One is Zara had its own subsidiaries in most European and South African cities that were perceived to have high growth potential and low business risk. So, if it is high growth low business risk you enter yourself. And joint ventures in Germany and Japan, the deal was on 50-50 joint ventures. In Italy, Inditex held 51 percent share in Jara. However, Jara has recently increased the ownership to 78 percent. In Germany, 80 percent in Italy, 100 percent in Japan. So, franchising this strategy is chosen for high risk countries like Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Andorra, and Malaysia. So, wherever there is high risk, you have franchising. You give your stuff to people, they sell it. On the other hand, if you have joint ventures, when 
you do not see a high risk. And if you do not have any problem, you would say below the business risk, then you enter it yourself with its subsidiaries. So, how do you compare the business models of GAP, uh, Hennis and Benetton and so on with Inditex? Inditex is a global company of Zara. So, how do you compare the business models? Now, a business model is not a business strategy. A business strategy is specified how, what is the offer, who are the customers and how the offer is produced and delivered to the customers. Now, the how question is the one, the firm's choice of business model. How do you deliver to the customers? Organizations essentially have the same product or service. They aim for the same market segment and so do so in different business models, the how. Now, what is the business model that the Zara follows? Zara's rise to fast fashion dominance did not depend on the product or market in innovation. The heart of the company's innovation lay in its vertical integration of activities from design and all channels of the supply chain. Now, it is the how question that matters. How are you offering it? You know the market. You know what you are offering. Then how are you offering? You are offering what Zara's offer is. They look at the customers, what the customers want. Buy a survey at the stores or in TV channels at the university campuses and supply it within two weeks at stores which are in high streets in various cities, big cities. That is the model how it supplies. So, it is basically whatever the customers think that it is the uh, it is the high fashion items. They are available in the stores within two weeks. So, people go there and buy. And here since Jara wants the entire supply chain that is vertically designed. It designs, it manufactures, it wants all the things. Then it, not, it need not have to depend on outsiders for a manufacturer. There is no question of capacity limitations of others that will affect your supply chain. There is no limitation of multi-fiber agreements. There is no limitation of by other uh, countries restricting your entry and so on. So, it is basically you are avoiding all the risks by owning this material. So, whatever losses you incur by keeping the extra capacity, you gain by having by not having the risk. So, if you compare Jara with Gap, H&M outsource all the production while Zara retained many production activities in house and kept all internal and external activities under strict control. And HMM competitive strategy is different. Its prices were lower, its spending on advertising much higher and its stores less of scale. Now, Zara does not advertise. There is no advertising expenditure that is involved in this. And for a fashion retailer, this looks like a surprise. Now, it thinks by having a stores in the high street is an advertising itself, is an advertisement by itself. And when you are having things on this and when you are doing well and when everybody is writing about your business policy, is it not advertising? So, this is advertising by doing well. So, newspapers write about you, magazines write about you. So, that is what the business strategy or the advertising strategy of, of Zara. Both Gap and H&M relied on traditional push approach devoting substantial 
resources to advertising. Jara used a pull approach that is attracting shoppers with small collections and new weekly offerings in reaction, in reaction to customers. So, whatever are the offerings, weekly offerings, new weekly offerings or what the customers wanted because when they were interviewed by Zara uh, um, uh, staff, they have expressed the desire to have the color, the, the kind of fashion that they wanted and that is available after two weeks in the store. So, this is like made to order, this is made to order without commitment for the customer. So, that is the kind of pull approach that uh, Zara follows and at GAP the design preceded manufacturing and commercial activity while Zara business model configured the same activities simultaneously by taking a team approach to design manufacturing and commercialization. So, everything is done in parallel, your commercialization basically is your you asking the customers, interviewing customers what they want, finding out on campuses what the people are looking for and you the design. So, you are manufacturing whatever, whatever people are asking for and you design those things in the way they want and you manufacture it. As I said before, it is made to order without an order. So, what is the management team of uh, Zara? The key governance team for orchestrating internal activities for each product is a trio. Who are the big people in Zara? The designer, of course, the designer who does this one, he, he gets all the information what people want, what, what people are looking for and he designs it. The commercial person who is talking to the stores manager and analyzing the previous sales and the supply chain person ensuring the collection that would be agreed to be on the table could actually be made to order to deliver new fashion to shops every week and change 70 percent of the stores. So, you have the designer, you have the commercial person and your supply chain manager. So, what is the IT at Zara? One would expect that Zara would have impressive array of complex expensive IT systems, but it does not. Four critical information related areas that Zara uh, include collecting information and consumers need, designers check the database and have access to real time information. Zara warehouses the product information with common definitions allowing quick and accurate design preparations with clear cut manufacturing instructions. Product information and inventory management gives Zara capability to design a garment with available stocks rather than having to order and wait for the material to come. And distribution management, distribution facility with minimum human intervention, optimal reading device is sought out and distribute 60,000 items in hours. So, here it is you can see what is the kind of IT that they are using, the IT is for the, the front end right like the design, where do you store, what are the kind of items that are used and so on. The IT is not in stores management, is how much it is sold and all that. They may not have the ERP systems and all that. The IT that they have is basically to provide people what they want. So, to collect all the information accurately and process it so that the designer will get an accurate information of the customer requirements or customer tests or what the customer intends to buy and you want to convert that what the customers intent into a design 
and a product and finally deliver it him at, at uh, within 2 weeks. Now to deliver this product in 2 weeks you need the material. If you go to the market or go to a weaver to weave this, uh, this, this particular cloth it may take time. So, if a particular product is made out of silk and the silk is not available, you make it with cotton. That is a new product. Price it accordingly. So, you may manufacture the product or make the product have the designs ready with whatever material that is available to you and submit it to this one. So, there is this information technology is basically is in the front end in the design and in the manufacture. But most of the information technology in other stores is going to be in the retail sector. So, once you have this what are the risks of failure of, uh, uh, of Zara business model. Now, if you look at the what is the Zara business model, the Zara business model is is very simple. If you are in a fashion business, go to the university campuses, go to shops, when people come interview them, what kind of fashion they want, what is the going color now and whether they want two pockets, one pocket, whatever. And once you have all this kind of information, with the available material in your, your warehousing, your people will design it and you have automated equipment to cut them and so on and afterwards their specialty tilers who basically produce the goods, they are ironed and sent out within two weeks. Now, if you look at the, the entire procedure, is there anything that ordinary fashion retailers cannot do? In other words, if you go into the core competency of, of this, so called core competency of this, I mean people may say what is there, you collect the information, you design accordingly and you send it to the, send it to the market. So, people think that there is a there is a risk of failure of Zara, people can imitate this particular business model and that is going to affect Zara very badly. So, why might Zara fail? How sustainable is the competitive advantage relative to the kind of advantages pursued by other apparel retailers? What are the advantages pursued by other retailers? A design advantage because they are going to they find out what is going to be the future fashion. Future fashion, not the current fashion. What Zara does is what is that people want today and supply it immediately. Whereas most of these people they want to create fashion. That is what the apparel, uh, this one that do. Several different failure scenarios can be identified. One is over investment made in capital assets. Now, Zara has owns lot of things. It owns the manufacturing facilities, it owns all the warehousing and others, it owns all the trucks and it practices or basically uh, uh, you know half uh, over, over investment in manufacturing to keep uh, 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 excess capacity and it full half full trucks and if it is needed you send it uh, this by air freight and all that without casting cost taking into cost and so on. So, it is highly asset intensive which people usually avoid. In the sense what happens is if the assets are there and the tomorrow the fashion changes and these asset specific investments can be a liability. 
one of the reasons why it's also capital intensive. You have spent a lot of money on this. One of the reasons why people avoid asset intensive, this one, is because as fashions change, as the machine technologies and other things change, you may become outdated. So, to avoid that, but Zara says it, it does not care and it makes capital intensive this one. If Zara goes bigger, in other words, supposing from 600 to it goes to 3000 stores, it gets international and so on. So, what is going to be is the strategy when it bigger, grows bigger, it is going to be complex manufacturing and distribution setup. Is it going to increase? its manufacturing size follow the same principles, leave half the capacity, a half excess capacity without work and send half the half the truck fulls and so on. So, what happens is, is if the same practices are followed, does it make profits? Is international expansion possible with the kind of this model kind of models with high fixed assets, low advertising and low working capital? There is no advertising at all. So, how is it going to it is going to make money? So, it basically means two things here. One is it does not follow the so called best practices of other companies outsourcing then you know full load trucks and uh, full scale and so on. It follows its own principles. So, is there a risk in, in such things? So, risk of failure of Zara business model. The explicit public and general nature of the business model makes replicating another firm's business model trivial. All evidence is to the contrary. What people think is that if your business model is explicit, it is clear to others, you can replicate it. And as we have seen, Zara's business model is explicit and it is easy to understand. It is just in time model where you find out what people want, stitch it and then supply it. Well, if this is the kind of model that uh, that can be easily be imitated, somebody else can do it. But that is what people may think, but the evidence is to the contrary. What is the evidence? The multiple failures of established lines like Delta, Continental and so forth to replicate the business model of Southwest Airlines suggest challenge of copying model that is explicit, public and general. Now, if you know the Southwest Airlines is basically a low cost airline in the United States it follows the principle of it does not it, it does not own the aircraft, it leases everything aircraft and it, is, it has its own staff and uh, you can buy the uh, you can buy the air tickets make airline reservations on the web and basically it runs like a uh, intercity bus transport. There are no waiting times as the, uh, it comes to a particular place and then it connects. It does not follow the Hubbard spoke, it has direct flights and so on. So, and it is doing very well. So, when it is doing very well, other airlines like Delta, Continental, and others they thought they will also follow the business model like the intercity, but they could not. So, just because you understand the business model does not mean you can follow it, imitate it. Attempts to replicate best practice operations typically disappoint. Replicators often fail to appreciate the complex interconnection of multiple activities that constitute a best practice. What is a best practice? What is it that Jara is doing here? Zara is interacting directly with the customers. How is it interacting with the customers? It is interacting through university campus interviews, 
through 3V by participate by going to the high fashion shows and also in its store talking to customers and having it in high store so that people can visit frequently at no cost. They come to the high street for some other purpose, they incidentally visit Jara, so it is no cost. And when they visit Zara, they frequently supply very critical marketing information. And that anybody else can also do this. It is not, it is not very difficult for somebody to do, but it is, it is very difficult to get into this kind of practice. And also you keep all everything yourself and you buy the material, you have inventory of the material and whatever is available you design and then you sell it. So, whatever are the best practices that Zara has are very simple practices. They can be easily imitable, but people fail to imitate. So, having looked at the entire thing, what is the key take, take away here? Of course, the key, the key, the key, the key takeaway is run your business right. What is your business? So, for our business model, the key takeaway is run your business right. And here, selling state of the art fashion through being a fashion follower. You are not a fashion creator, you are a fashion follower. This is the one that I mentioned earlier that it is does not try to create fashion. It tries to find out what is it that people want today, what is people think is the fashion and just make it and then and then deliver it to the stores. That is the first thing it does. Second thing is integration of upstream to create competitive advantage downstream. Relation between distribution and product development. Now here you once you find out what the people want, you integrate your, your upstream, your manufacturing, your design, product development and all that to competitive, to create competitive advantage downstream at the customer end, at your retail end. Evolutionary product development and sourcing. So you are, pro, you are sourcing product, so this one since everything is is manufactured, all the apparels are manufactured in, in Zara stores, all that you require are the materials. So, the materials are, are basically kept in stock and sourcing of those, product development and distribution instead of promotion underlies brand development. Now, it does not do promotion, it does not do advertising. So, what is the advertising that Jara does? The advertising that Jara does is to keep the product which the customer desires has only a mental picture of the product in the shelf within two years, two weeks. So, product development and distribution instead of promotion, there is no promotion that is involved. So, you integrate all the activities, design, product development, manufacturing and distribution very well and supply it to the stores and to create competitive advantage downstream the retailer at the retail end. And rethink of the entire supply chain, what is your supply chain? Reduction in markdown can even more than make up for increase in the labor cost. So, you have increasing in the labor cost, you are increasing on this, your markdown, you spend 80 percent at the, at the full cost and only 20 percent are marked down. And planned shortage, shortages can induce more future demand. I mean, this is a big risk that they are taking. You, you basically keep some of the items, the shelves empty, thinking that people visit more times and whenever they visit, they buy 
and they have this fear that is created that if you go there you like something you better buy it now. And these shortages are very well planned. And of course, good store location, layout and product display that can substitute advertising. So, do not advertise, do not follow, but then you have very good store location display and so on. And faster response eliminates inventory rest. Now, here is the is the case, you, you have huge inventory, you outsource it to China and other places. So, it takes 6 weeks for your goods to come uh, by sea uh, and all that if you are lucky and that means you are keeping 6 weeks inventory. And instead of that if you have a system, so if you are shortage, if you are short you think if there is a shortage then you make a, you miss the opportunity of making a profit and you order more and afterwards you basically sell them at uh, discount. Instead of that, so there are if there are pluses and minus. So you save by outsourcing, but you lose by selling at discount. You save by not owning the, your facilities, but you lose by uh, having extra stocks and having lot of lead times and keeping lot of inventory. But on the other hand, if you have on site manufacturing facilities, fast designers and so on, then you gain, you are, you are not keeping the inventory and so on. So, if you carefully balance out, look, look at the what is gains and what are the, what are the losses and have Zara as, as, and also other players, then you can find it does not have advertising but it is advertising is finding out from people what they want and keeping it on the stores at high stores. So, basically this, this it may look unconventional thinking, but if you look at it carefully, it has a logic, but it is unconventional because you know people think different. So, that is where Zora has made lot of profits and then it is a successful model that is the key takeaway from this. So, I think when you are telling uh, uh, looking at supply chain and outsourcing globalization and all that, Zara is certainly a counter example. You can run your supply chain at your house efficiently and satisfy your customers and be the world class company.